Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Bespoke Chats. It's been a few weeks since the last one, so I figured it was time for a new one. Uh, so before I get into the meat of today's episode, I wanted to talk about a little improvement I made that'll make uh, the patching experience a lot better. So it used to be that to repatch modules, you'd have to you know, hold the R key and click on them and then go to the target and click on the target, which worked fine, but it wasn't very intuitive. So this new way that I've added is now you can click on the ends of the patch cables and you're controlling them there and then you can drag them and drop them on a new destination, uh, which I think will be a lot more intuitive to use. Uh, I'd sort of put off doing it because I thought it was going to be really hard to do, but then it ended up being pretty easy. So now it's in. Uh, okay, so in this episode, I wanted to talk about using the sampler grid um, to do some sampling and then send those samples into your drum player so you can sort of get a MPC style experience. So the way the sampler grid works is it takes audio coming into it and it'll pass the audio through, but also if you hold a button um, on an assigned grid, then you can capture the audio coming into it and play it back. So you can do sort of like a uh, 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 uh. wow that was beautiful um, and if you hold the bottom row and then click on a button you'll clear it out so that you can record something new there um, so rather than recording my voice let's uh, pick something a little nicer uh, let's get some Al Green in there uh, and then let's sort of create like a old style hip hop beat so I'll play it. I have it connected to my uh, iPhone here. Uh, I'll play it and uh, we'll capture it. All right, so I was holding the button there. So if we click the edit, you can see the waveform there. So let me press that. So there are these new controls on the sampler grid where you can change the start and end point. So, you know, you could just get the first hit. Uh, so we'll use this to chop up the beat into, let's just grab the first four hits. Um, and to give us other ones to work with, we want to use the same sample. Uh, let's hit the duplicate button and then hit other buttons. So let's get four duplicates of this sample. So we have four there across, and now let's uh, move the clips to just the hits that we want. Uh, and we can actually zoom in here to make this easier. And we get a better view of the, uh, the waveform. And if we hold shift while using the mouse wheel, we can get a very fine control over, where, over these sliders where we're clipping. All right, now let's get the third hit. And the okay, cool. So we have those four. So now let's zoom back out. Now we can take those samples and we can drop them into the drum player. So if we, on the sample from the edit mode, we can grab on the sample and drag and drop it onto a pad on our drum player. And I have the drum player hooked up to my machina here. So let me grab each of them and pass them through. Cool, so now we have all those four on the drum player. So now let's make a little beat. Let's slow it down a bit. Um, and let's go. Cool, and if you made that a loop, you know, it's a, it's a nice little beat. You could uh, put a verse over it and it would sound awesome. Uh, we can also, instead of playing it by hand with the Machina, we could do it with the drum sequencer. So we could, let's see, let's set our tempo to 89 here. Let's clear out the sequence that's in there by default. Let's, uh, let's create, I think we can create a pretty similar beat to what we had there. Let's see what that sounds like.
Yeah, I think we could turn that into a track. All right. Um, so yeah, that's that's all. I think that works a lot like the MPC works. I've never used an MPC, but from from my understanding, that's uh, pretty similar to the MPC workflow. Um, so uh, for now, one thing: uh, none of the the sampler grid, the contents of the sampler grid, and the samples you drop onto the drum player aren't currently savable. Um, they're just sort of there, and then when you close bespoke, they won't come back. So I guess for now, I'll uh, encourage you to embrace this ephemerality. Um, but in the future, I'd, I'm going to make it savable. That's something I'd really like to do. Uh, so you can sort of create these kits and you can save all the samples out with a drum player. Um, and they'll just load up all together. And that's also something I'd like to add to Bespoke in general. I, I find that I've been, you know, I'll, I'll play with Bespoke and I'll play with it for like an hour, half an hour, an hour and come up with a song. And then, uh, you know, I'll have to go do something else and I'll, I'll close bespoke and I'll, I'll lose that thing I was working on forever. Uh, and I just go, sort of get the start of it and I can record that, but I can't really iterate on it and work on it. Um, so that's something that, uh, I think in order to make good songs, I'm going to have to, uh, have something that I can, you know, work on, come back to. So, uh, I think it'll be a lot of work to get everything savable, but I would like to get it so that I can sort of you know, save the entire state of Bespoke, uh, close it, and then open it up the next day, the next week, the next month, and just sort of keep working on songs. Um, so, you know, we'll see when I do that, but that, that functionality will be incoming at some point. So that'll be a lot of fun. All right, guys. Uh, well, thanks for, thanks for watching. Uh, I will see you next time, and uh, catch you later.